Okay, here's the situation. You are working on a game, or you've been hired to do some marketing for a game. The game is launching in a year or so. You don't have a AAA budget. What do you do? What's in your marketing toolkit? What are some of your go-to marketing strategies and tactics? In this video, we'll go over some tried and tested marketing tips and tricks for launching an indie game. We are Ask Game Dev, and this is the Game Marketing Roadmap. Part one. Welcome back. We make videos on how to elevate your game development and inspire others. If after watching this video, you want to continue the game dev conversation, check out the video description for a link to our Discord server. Okay, welcome to day one of your new job or venture. The game is still in its infancy and you are in charge of marketing. Let's go over marketing tips throughout each phase of the process of making video games. The first phase of video game creation is pre-production. It's a common misconception that marketing starts once the game is ready or close to shipping. Marketing actually takes place right at the start. A game wouldn't, or at least shouldn't, advance from pre-pro if some sort of marketing research hasn't been done. Marketing should partner with creative to inform them on the market opportunity and the expectation of the consumer around depth and feature set. Target platform, release window, and follow-up DLC updates can all be researched in this pre-pro stage. How big is the market for your title? How many people would potentially play your game? While this number would be impossible to calculate to the number, there are still ways to at least get a ballpark number. The first way to narrow this number down is to find your initial base size. If your game is for a particular console like Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, or PS4, the install numbers for these consoles are readily available. The easiest way to find this is to Google it. If your game is on, say, PC, the amount of active users on certain platforms like Steam is also readily available. Steam shares their stats on a dedicated stats page. Now you have your absolute max. Obviously, not every person on a particular console or platform will buy your game, so you have to narrow it down even more. The best way to do this is to find sales data for similar titles. There are a number of ways to do this. Number one, use a tool like Steam Spy. Steam Spy provides estimates of the number of owners and active users for games on Steam. Or number two, search for the data in press releases or blog posts. As you've seen from our previous videos, there are many devs in the industry who are transparent about their development costs and or sales figures. When looking at comparables, don't just look at the hits or games that have been dominating for years. Pay attention to games that have released within one to two years and don't ignore poor selling titles either. At the end of this exercise, once you've gathered enough data on comparable titles, you'll want to be able to confidently estimate reasonable numbers for the upper and lower sales potential of your game. The research on comparable titles should also provide you with what the typical sale price for your type of game is. With these numbers, you will be able to estimate how many units you will need to sell to break even on your anticipated dev spend. When calculating this though, don't forget to consider units sold at a discounted price. Also consider user expectations around playtime. If you want to charge $39.99, you might not have a deep enough game and you will have to invest more dev spend. Knowing all the above during pre-pro is essential to helping inform future development and marketing decisions for the game. Next up, production. Once the game is greenlit, it moves over to production. This is when the actual game gets made. During the production phase, there are a number of things you could be doing to help get your game ready for launch. Let's go over a few of them. Number one, focus testing. You're not a designer, nor an engineer, so as the marketer, what can you do to make sure the game is the best product that it can be and help influence development? The answer to that is testing. Run play tests, both internal and external. Your goal here is to help identify areas of frustration and delight and create recommendations for the design team. Here are a few tips for running play tests. Number one, have a plan going in. Work with the design team to identify exactly what you're looking for when playtesting and create a list of questions together. Number two, when it comes time to interview playtesters, never ask leading or loaded questions. You want to avoid any sort of influence no matter how unintentional it may be. And number three, report back in a way that's actionable. 
It can be tempting to send over an information dump and pages and pages of notes back to the design team. But when reporting back, ask yourself, what did we learn from this round of playtests? How can I convey this back to the team as concisely as possible? And what realistic recommendations can I make for iteration? Number two, platform knowledge. At this stage, you want to start learning everything you can about your platform. Every platform, whether it's a distribution platform like Steam or a first-party platform like Nintendo eShop, will have its own unique promotional opportunities. You'll want to find out what each one is. Opportunities are available in a number of different ways. Here are a few. Self-serve opportunities. Some platforms have marketing tools built in. For example, Steam has tools like Visibility Rounds and Curator Connect that work on a self-serve basis. For more Steam tips, check out this video we created on Steam marketing. Marketing opportunities. Platforms like to promote upcoming games. Look for programs to participate in. Some examples, Xbox has a whole ID at Xbox program where they help indie devs in a number of ways. They can promote your game with a post on Xbox.com, show your game on their dedicated ID at Xbox YouTube channel, talk about your game on their Mixer stream, or even provide booth spaces at their ID at Xbox showcases. Nintendo also does a lot to help promote indies on their platforms. They have the Indie World Initiative, the Nintendo Power Podcast, and even host a number of indie game trailers on their official YouTube channel. And lastly, probably the most important, storefront opportunities. It's common for platforms to have curation and promotions features right on their store pages. Find out what these opportunities are and talk to your platform partners about how you can potentially get features for your game. Number three, build partnerships and relationships. You should also start building partnerships and relationships while the game is in production. What opportunities are out there? Here are just a few. Your platform. As we highlighted in the last section, there are so many great marketing opportunities that come from your partner alone. One thing that will really help you in learning about these opportunities or gaining access to these is building a strong relationship with someone at your platform. In terms of finding them, it's different for every platform. Sometimes a rep will reach out, sometimes you'll have to ask, and sometimes you'll have to do some old-fashioned networking. Your engine. Engines love to showcase games that are being worked on. You might have a chance to get featured on their website, their video reels, or even their booth at future game shows. Let your engine know what you're working on and share your progress with them. The press and influencers. Now is also a good time to start building relationships with the press. Look for journalists and influencers that cover the types of games that you work on and start learning about them and their content. Try to form a genuine connection early, so that by the time it's time for your game to be announced, it feels less like a cold call when you reach out to them. Other devs. We say it all the time. The indie game dev community is amazing. Start going to indie dev meetups and build relationships with other devs. Not only is it motivational and encouraging to surround yourself with other devs doing the same thing, but you could also help one another promote your games down the line. A lot of developers have mailing lists and social audiences that they can use to cross-promote in return for similar efforts on your part. At some point during production, and it's different for every studio and every game, you have to announce your game. This is when you tell the world what you're working on, usually with a press release, a website, some beautiful assets, and a trailer. Here are some tips for this stage. Number one, build your community. Now that the world knows about your game, you'll want to start building a community and collecting information right away. Here are three things that will help. A mailing list. You'll want the email address of anyone interested in your game. There are a number of great mailing list services out there. One we recommend is MailChimp. A Discord server. Create a space for your community to chat about your game and get hyped together. You can also use your Discord as a place to coordinate playtests with external testers. An optimized landing page. When people see your trailer or read your press release, where will they be pointed to if they're interested in learning more? Usually, it's to a landing page. Make sure your landing page directs your potential new fans to wishlist your game, to join your mailing list, and to join your Discord server. 
Number 2. Make great content. Keep the content flowing through to launch. This is to sustain interest from your current community, but also help towards building an even larger one. Some types of content include game assets. This includes screenshots, GIFs, game clips, and feature videos. A devlog. Share some behind-the-scenes development with your community in a devlog. You can include concept art, prototype images, and share your process. Interesting original content. What other types of content can you make that's original, will target your market, build an audience, and is interesting? Well, we covered some of those content ideas in our video, Indie Game Marketing with Zero Budget. Marketing tips. Click the card to check it out. Okay, so at this point in development, the game is still in production, but let's see what you've done. You've done some market research that will help inform future decisions. You've done and continue to do extensive playtesting, making the game as good as it can be. You know the ins and outs of your platform and know every marketing opportunity available. You've built relationships with your platform, your engine, the press, and other game developers. You've started building a community and you've kept your community engaged with great content. You should be getting closer to launch now and are well positioned for it. Thanks for watching. In our next video in this series, we'll go over marketing tips for your game's pre-launch, launch, and post-launch. For more Ask Game Dev, check out this video on marketing mistakes or this playlist on game marketing.